Thank you for joining PCR Planet. Today I will take you to Germany and Serbia. We will hear news from peers from the world. And I'm um, delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Yolinda Mehili from uh, um, Munich in Germany and Dr. Goran Stankovic from Belgrade, Serbia. I'll start with you, uh, Yolinda. Tell us a bit in a few words about the experience and how you're dealing with the epidemic in Germany. And in particular, um, I'm, I'm interested to, to learn about the numbers in Bavaria versus uh, the rest of the country. So thank you, William, for having me here. Sure, in Bavaria, we have the higher numbers of COVID infected patients within the Germany. We are reaching now 34,000 patients. The increase in numbers is a slow one, and I have to say the situation is under control. In our clinic, we have prepared the structures, as the colleagues have done in Italy, in America, France, and everywhere in this world, having a double structure. We have prepared also the cardiology for having a double structure with COVID and non-COVID patients. We have some more special features maybe in our center that we have not only the normal ward for COVID and non-COVID patients, but also we have a psychiatric ward uh, divided in the COVID psychiatric ward and a non-COVID psychiatric ward. This is the, the most special thing I have seen compared with the other colleagues. Thank you. It's great to hear that the situation is under control. Uh, what about you, Goran, in, in, um, in Belgrade and in Serbia in general? How is uh, the situation? Thank you, thank you very much for having me, William. I'm joining you from my hospital, clinical center of Serbia. We are large center with 33 clinics. So we reorganized our work and we have clinic for infectious disease and clinic for pulmonology being dedicated for COVID-19 patient treatment. And the rest of the clinical hospital is actually for all other emergency patients because the whole hospital actually doing elective cases. And since March 6, we are actually focused on emergency cases. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I mean, Serbia is known for being probably one of the best practices in the world in taking care of acute coronary syndromes and particularly STEMI. Is that program still up and running under the epidemic? Uh, yes, thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, we work since 2006 as uh, one of the largest hospitals probably in Europe with more than 1,000 primary PCI cases for STEMI. But since 2016, we have a great STEMI network, hospitals working on a rotation basis, similar network, and we have clinical center of Serbia fully open for over seven. So at the beginning of the week, we immediately had a conference call and we decided to proceed the same way as before with one difference. The first hospital in Belgrade, clinic for drug, clinic Dragi Shamishovic was actually selected to be COVID hospital for acute coronary syndrome, especially STEMI. So we work the same. We admit patients through the emergency medical system. Patients who are COVID positive go directly one hospital, COVID center, all the others come to nearest hospital during the daytime and have one hospital which is dedicated for all STEMI patients, again, clinic Dedinje. So in the beginning, we decided to follow suggestion of Chinese colleagues to advise hospitals out Belgrade to start with thrombolytic treatment because of possible delays. But with daily information, we realized very quickly that time delays are very short. So we changed and came back to routine. And now we treat almost all patients, whether COVID positive or not, 
with primary PCI as the first option. Thank you, Goran. Let me turn to you, Linda, again. Um, you perhaps in Germany and in Bavaria had a little more time to get prepared so you could implement all the changes in the hospital and division organization. Is there anything specific that you have implemented uh, in your environment? So, as you said, William, we were prepared since we had our neighbors, Italian, being in such um, um, big trouble with um, acute uh, with COVID. So we reacted very fast. Our task, COVID task force reacted very fast in changing the structure and um, releasing a lot of standard operation procedures for personnel, for patients, for relatives of the patients, and for um, preparing also teaching videos for us and also for the others in Munich and in Bavaria, for others hospital in Munich and Bavaria. But um, we were fo focused also in the well-being of our patients because COVID patients are not all intensive patients and only half of them are intensive patients. And uh, half of them, so at the moment we have 30 patients who are COVID positive, having lung disease or other um, manifestations, even cardiac manifestations, but who feel isolated because we have visiting ban as everywhere in other hospitals uh, who take care of COVID patients. So they feel very isolated. That's why we took care of this patient to reduce a little bit the social distancing. And one of the measurements that we have done is um, taking tablets and leaving, uh, for, giving to the patient to communicate per video with relatives is one. <clears throat> one of the measurements we have done. Another measurement is that the patient also are looking at uh, teaching videos or explaining videos regarding the disease. Another one is that we are offering to them um, psychological support because they, have, they are a lot afraid of this uh, unknown disease with such a high mortality as they have heard. So that's why we are doing this three measure. We have taken these three measurements for keeping the patient quiet and for supporting them also psychologically, not only physically. Another specialty in, in our clinic is that we, we as a cardiology have um, one full ward, which is with COVID patients, some of them without cardiac manifestation and the others with cardiac manifestation. As you know, nearly one third of the patients has already a troponin elevation, the COVID patients. And we are very interested also to see how to, and to understand the cardiac manifestation of this disease. And we are do doing also research regarding the inflammation and regarding the acute coronary syndrome triggered by COVID-19 disease. Doing, um, um, for example, for patients with the COVID myocarditis, doing biopsies to understand if that is really the COVID, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 um, uh, mm -hmm. virus uh, causing this. We are doing um, also MRIs for this patient. We are doing a randomized trial also, um, investigating the role of um, ACE inhibitor cessation among COVID patients, which is a uh, by the way, an international trial, multi-center international trial. Another, That's great um, to hear. I, I think um, there, there is one aspect about trying to bridge the social, you know, the isolation uh, using actually digital means and, and the other aspect is the research. I'll come back to you in a second. Um, um, Goran, yourself, have you, have you experienced within the teams or with the patients or with the colleagues this um, the side effect of isolation and having to take distance? Uh, yes, thanks for that question. I think it's present also here. What we try to have a daily teleconferences, communicate and share the experience, try to implement. Uh, as one of the largest hospitals, our colleagues are now sent from Clinical Center of Serbia to help in COVID ICUs in another hospital in Belgrade. So one of the ways to spread the message is to exchange experience during daily teleconferences and then to implement locally in other hospitals. We don't have specific psychiatric units, 
but I like to learn from Leolinda and I'll try to get this information maybe today. Thank you for sharing that um, indeed. So we'll, we'll bring this uh, conversation to, to a conclusion. Thank you very much for joining. I'm, I would like to finish by asking you a difficult question and um, how, how do you see uh, each of you, and, and maybe we start with, with, uh, with Goran, how do you see us going back to what used to be normal life or, or will, it be, will it be the same life after, after COVID? How do you see things personally and, and in your hospital? Uh, personally, I see much broader use of telemedicine in communication with patients, in outpatient clinics, but also in our teaching and education. Because during this period, we already connected with some hospitals in Serra, and we do telemedicine uh, meetings discussing complex patients in order to uh, identify patients who need to be transferred emergently. But also there are some efforts uh, to uh, share education and teaching worldwide. And we try to connect with colleagues from New York, for example, and continue discussing and educating our colleagues in the fields they find the most interesting. And of course, uh, I think that in the next couple of years, uh, the growth in telemedicine and education, web software will increase and will help us with high quality to continue what we regularly do. Thank you, Goran. Um, this is a message for all of us, and I also take it uh, as a message to the chairman of PCR, right? <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. And yourself, Yulinda, I mean, will you be the same person after, after this uh, going through this storm? I'd say I will be a more digitalized person. <laughs> I fully agree with Goran. So we, it will be more telemedicine. We will be more digitalized, more uh, uh, video teaching. But uh, I hope also that uh, the, the world after Corona virus epidemics will be also a world which will have much more respect for, for our nurses, for physicians who are fighting at this moment with this disease. Yeah, we all hope that um, we will keep the leverage and that, um, you know, the communities will not forget too quickly um, all the good uh, statements and um, decisions that, that were made about uh, making sure that uh, patients are granted access to proper care and that uh, healthcare providers uh, are respected and given the means to, um, to deliver the care. We, we've, we've seen in these days uh, how badly... Uh, you know, the work we're doing is, is needed and, and how great it is in terms of uh, helping and supporting people. So thank you very much for these great messages. Uh, I really liked uh, your, your joint message about the fact that uh, the COVID crisis is going to accelerate the um, electronic and digital transformation of our world. Maybe the medical world was a bit behind compared to others. Now we need to be in front. And the second message is, let's keep it uh, human communication, even though it uh, travels through digital means. So thank you again, and thank you all for joining PCR Planet. We'll talk to you later again. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you.